Congressman Dean Phillips, thank you so much for your time and for joining us here at NTD News. We're the second day of the DNC. Uh, what are your expectations for tonight's messages? I know that the theme is a, a bold vision for America's future. Well, I have to say that I, I've been joking with many that I, I was a, a fearful that we'd be attending a funeral, and it feels now like a birth. And I think tonight's messages from the Obamas and others is going to be celebratory. I think the last time the Democratic Party felt this kind of energy was probably in 2008 with Barack Obama himself. So I think there's an interesting uh, bridge that might be built tonight. But this is just the beginning. And um, this honeymoon will you know, not last forever. And I think next week, the real campaign begins. And, uh, but we're going to leave here energized and optimistic and hopeful. And I think that message of, you know, um, of working together uh, and setting aside differences uh, and building bridges and listening to voters is the one that should permeate this. And people are going to go home pretty excited. Congressman, you're talking about building bridges, and of course, uh, we have seen a different mood here at the DNC from what we thought it was going to be a month ago, but there's also a bridge to be uh, built in between Republicans and Democrats coming to the election. Do you think uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, as the nominee for the Democratic Party, will be able to do that? I sure hope so. And, you know, and let me reflect on Joe Biden's leadership. That was his superpower compassion, decency, respect, and bipartisanship. But there is a toxic culture that is permeating a lot of our politics, and it is not easy. It's easy to talk about it. It's harder to do. You know, that has been my mantra. It's been my mission since I joined Congress, and I've been reasonably successful in doing so. I hope, I really do hope that soon to be, I hope President Harris and Vice President Walls make that a priority, literally a platform element um, to express the invitation to other pe thinkers, uh, political thinkers, and people who eat, pray, think, and live differently than perhaps you know base Democratic voters, and I'd like to think that in the future, Democratic and Republican presidents will consider adding members of their cabinet from the other side of the aisle to demonstrate to Americans that their voice is going to be heard in the White House. Because in this kind of a democracy with such close elections, it's difficult when about half the country feels left out of that conversation. So I hope so. Uh, I will encourage it and promote that, and either way, it is incumbent on elected officials all around the country to start expressing more respect for one another and modeling the behavior that we'd expect of not just American citizens, but world citizens. Well, Congressman, you know, right now the focus is, of course, in the presidential race, but uh, when we discuss the policies that uh, Kamala Harris has proposed already, um, she's going to need the help of Congress to get a lot of that done. Sure. Uh, and of course, right now, Congress is at a gridlock. How do you see uh, the elections playing out for the composition of the House and the Senate? Mm -hmm. Well, I would have said, I mean, I would have said that if Joe Biden was going to be the nominee, that we wouldn't just lose the White House, but almost certainly the Senate and, and uh, not recapture the House. And that would have been tragic. Uh, now, I think it's just the opposite. I think that pendulum is swinging fast in the other direction. I think the White House certainly is within reach. I think the Senate can be held, and I think we will bend back the House. That's integral. But I also remind viewers that our founders in the United States intended the presidency to be the chief executive, the executive branch, to execute the laws, not to make them. That is the job of Congress. But it is that vacuum that occurs when Congress is dysfunctional that requires the administration to basically set the policy agenda. But that is something I think Americans have to start giving more thought to, is electing presidents who are ready to lead not just on a policy perspective, but really in a management perspective, run the agencies well, provide good customer service to, you know, to Americans, and also to provide good value for taxpayers. That's kind of become a lost art on both sides of the aisle. And I'd like to think that uh, Pres uh, President Harris and Vice President Walls will make that a priority as well.